you know, barring someone in urethane not having the best to carry. Uh, but, you know, he, he believed in the ball change, and, you know, he came down the stretch, caught that lucky break, but it was definitely a huge momentum swing for us to even the score early. Kyle, in your prediction looking ahead, do you feel the way this pattern transitions gives your team an edge? I would, I would think so, just because of the amount of commitment. You can see already how tight, how tight down lane we are getting. And uh, so I think the power and the rev rate that our team has is going to give us a little bit of advantage, especially on the burn and double burn matches in this session. Is that part of your strategy coming into today? Yeah, we wanted to go with the the 38 footer, but the lighter volume, because we felt like that eliminated some bowling balls. Uh, because we bowled on a pattern with more volume, and we felt like they were pretty easy. So we wanted to try and make them a little tougher, make balls do a little wiggle down lane, which you've seen right there. And hopefully, uh, you know, Simonson having a little more rev rate, being able to open up the lane a little, little bit more, should have success in this match. Well, the opening effort from Stuart Williams was eerily similar to a frame he had in the Baker match. He tidied it up in the end, but it was... One of those situations where a good second ball was required. And the thing with Stewie is he's bowled so good in this event for a long time. You know, he, he's going to be able to handle one or two not the best of shots and still be able to bounce right back. And that looked like a ball change. Simo moved back to the right after his few warm-up shots and caught a bad break there. So... Their singles match last year was so, so important. The Europeans were coming back. They were gaining momentum. And Simonson won it 2 5 8 2 5 6. That really tipped the balance, I thought. We see Stu Williams coming up light again. This time, the eight not accompanying the two. Much easier spare this time, but still doesn't appear his ball reaction is ideal, Kyle. No, and you know, I thought that this pattern would actually play a little tougher. You know, it is a five to one ratio, but I think when we take the lane surface into play, being such a high friction lane surface, that uh, we feel like this pattern it was going to be fairly difficult, and that's why we felt like we still had the advantage being able to maybe open up the lane a little bit more and use our power to our advantage. Does Anthony make a move here off that opening split, or is it just a bad shot? I think he would definitely be making a small move to the left. Yeah, that was definitely much for the left. I think that was a blind move to start the match because he was throwing a, a zen from further left, curving the lane, so... I think he just moved a little too far right on his first shot. He was a lot more confident, went through the front part of the lane a lot easier. Yeah, we've seen a couple of shots of the American bench. We've seen newbie, if you want to call him that. Tom Doherty talking a lot with you guys. Has it been beneficial so far? Yeah, you know, I haven't got the ball very much at all. And uh, he's been very talkative, but very informative. He's very smart. He knows what he's talking about. You know, he was just talking me through Thomas's ball reaction last game, and you know he called the flat ten. So I mean, he he seems to be very knowledgeable, and you know uh, brings a little fun to the team as well. You know, seeing him cutting up with Barnes last match. The delayed reaction pin there, yielding a strike for the Europeans. Well, you hear comments of good shot from Anthony Simonson's teammates, and here's here's why they're saying it. That's just about as good as you can throw one right there, Kyle. Yeah, I had a little grimace on my face after that 10 pence stood on that shot. That was a greatly executed shot. 10 pence, baby. Here we go. 
Görüşürüz. It seems like, I don't know if it's just going to be this time. It was a situation encountered by Chris Barnes a lot early in his match, but that ended favourably for Captain America. Well, Stu on a ball change here, Kyle. Let's see if he makes a small move. Yeah, so you can see that he went to a pearl ball, a pearl cover of the same core that he was throwing. So it definitely stores a little more energy. That was just a little too far left, I think. I think that's definitely going to be the right ball moving forward for Stu. I think he was just fishing for that uh, Captain America Brooklyn hit. Didn't quite work out. Stu distracted by something off to his right. We do have a crew back there behind the pin setter to make sure everything is running smoothly. Stu going to reset and take his time. Good concentration for Stu there with a little bit of distractions going on. One thing you always want to do in bowling, if anything distracts you, step off. That first thought of, should I step off? Definitely want to listen to your first instinct. Want a little bit of a, of a reprieve for Anthony Simons here. Simonson here as he steps up in the fourth frame. Americans only trailing at this point by seven pins. just doesn't quite seem to want to get it done. I mean, if it goes back-to-back -back great shots and that six wraps around that ten that fast. Anthony going with a Roto-Grip hyped pearl. No trouble on the ten pin. Interesting to see the adjustment he makes. So I don't think it's going to be another ball change. It might just be a little bit slower speed, give the ball time to go through the pins a little bit better because he was a little firm and a little up the lane. So I would expect to see a speed adjustment and maybe a little softer on this next frame. Kyle, do you think he rotates it just a touch to try to get it to tip over? I think a little bit of slower speed and maybe a tad more rotation will get those corner pins out. History, recent history, repeats itself. Well, that was the one Stu was looking for in the fourth frame. He projects this ball much further right down lane, getting about to the seventh board, and ball coming right back and making short work of that five and seven. Slower speed, a little more rotation, open the lane up a tad bit more. Ending result, strike. Yeah, and this is, I really feel this is when the lane starts to get into Anthony's wheelhouse when, when he can open up a lane like that. He's like, hey, how about that? I got all 10 down on the first try. And let me tell you folks, back home, Kyle Troop was nodding in approval and the ball was well, less than halfway down to the target. He knew he'd nailed it. And as you can see there, I'd say the Stewart having a little bit more end of a end roll. His ball doesn't quite get as far to the right, but you see it just you see it be a little smoother down lane off of the back end of the pattern. So that's the difference in ball rolls a little bit being showcased between the two players here. Yeah, and you can definitely see a, a little more of that shim or hold in the middle part of the lane starting to develop now too, which you know is, is definitely going to lead to 
a little more higher scores here. there from the crowd. Sounded like a little Simon Samara got distracted a little bit in his approach. Yeah, this ball just uncharacter uncharacteristically wide right down lane. You see that ball almost getting to about the two board. Anthony only really trying to get it to the fifth or sixth board. Very fortunate to only leave the two pin in that attempt. The third missed single pin by the Americans in two and a half games. Just, Kyle, this is really uncharacteristic from you guys. Knowing Anthony, I think maybe he was a little upset with the distraction on his first ball attempt. And then just a little bit of lack of focus, you know, missing the single pins. I'm a firm believer that when you miss single pins, nine times out of ten, it's just lack of focus. I definitely agree with you. Let's see if V. Stuve can hop all over that open frame by the Americans. Pretty good shot here by V. Stuve. Watch the four pin for this from the left on her screen, just laying in the channel. Not enough impotence to get up and slap the 10 out. Still a 34 pin lead for the Europeans. And Stu looks to clean this one up. Nah, he's a little crazy. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I wanted to bet money on this one. But this is pretty good. Normally, after a bad shot, Simon Sim. He comes back to probably one of his best shots. No, it's just me being out to be a little I mean, With the scoring oh, pace, he's that definitely going to need one of his best ones here to stay close during the last three frames of this match. Well, you can see up on the scoreboard, max score potential. 254 for the Americans. For the Europeans, 236 for the USA. And another wrap 10 pin for Anthony. Ball just doesn't want to go through the pins the right way. Same error twice, and he doesn't. But the fact remains that Anthony Simonson, late on, finds himself in a spot yeah, on board. I still don't think, still think it's going to go forward because when it gets into Thanks, the sure. urethane slide, it's in. Ah, we've heard the word forward uttered a few times from the American I bench. What's, what's that telling us? Well, it's telling us that the ball is just getting into the roll too soon. It's using up its energy in the front part of the lane too much, and then that way it doesn't have energy down lane, and the motion off of the back end of the pattern is a lot slower or a lot rounder. The European asking, Asking this ball to hold line. That means stop hooking, and it does. All 10 in the pit for Stu Williams. And this one getting out of reach for Anthony Simonson and the Americans. A little upset with himself there. A little towel flip. Might be a little too late in this match. Stu, no open frames in the pocket after making the ball change just about every time, so I expect him to make another good shot here in the ninth. He's wild card selection already. Very close to being vindicated. With the strike here, Stu can just about 
wrap this one up for the Europeans. That will do it, because I believe Stu's going to get two pins at least on his 10th frame shot. So, a greatly executed game for Stu on the back half. Yeah, with the ball switch, and then really trusting playing the hold. I, he stopped trying to play shape, and he went to playing hold, and I think that was the difference maker down the stretch. Yeah, when Stu's striking a lot, he's definitely playing the hold, you know, because he can use that more end over end ball roll. Keep the ball a little bit closer to the pocket. You know, you see Simonson figuring out the lane, but just a little too late in the match. Yeah, he was just too far right. Too far right and too much ball speed. Well, Stu Williams has a degree in accounting, so doing the maths here will be no problem whatsoever. It didn't matter. Nope, Stu putting this one out of reach basically in the ninth frame. Tenth frame really just more of a victory lap for the Europeans as they go up two to one in the early goings of this year's Weber Cup. Oh. Anthony having some fun with the crowd here. Well, it looked close, but really that was always in the control of Stu Williams. You know, I know it's early, but the underdogs lead the favourites 2-1.